everyone, my name is Elle, welcome. My friend Emily, Emily Concealer and Coffee, recently did a video on brands that bore her. And I loved the idea so much, I asked her if it would be okay if I did my own version. And she reluctantly agreed. <laughs> I was just so inspired by the concept and I really wanted to talk about some brands that bore me. All right, so disclaimer, this should probably go without saying, but I do feel the need to put a little warning up front that this is my point of view, my thoughts and impressions. You may not agree with me. There's probably gonna be a lot of hyperbole because I live for that. So this might not be your thing. Just a fair warning, in case you came here looking for a good time and you leave feeling attacked. All right, so for those of you still with me, I am going to talk about nine brands that bore me, largely from a product, inspiration, creativity point of view. And the first brand is Clinique. Clinique was founded in 1968, but perpetually looks like it's stuck in 1998. If Clinique had a theme song, it would be the one from Dawson's Creek. Clinique was the starter drug for a lot of makeup junkies because it was everywhere. At a time when makeup was nowhere near as accessible as it is now, you could always count on Clinique being at the department store your mother insisted on shopping at. It was always going to be there. And you can still find it at pretty much every department store makeup section. And you can recognize it right away, the beaming white, the sterilized counters, the lab coats, the orange foundation, but it's so dated. The branding, the packaging, everything is the same that it was before. And it's not even like throwback cool. It's not something that you could even get nostalgic about. It's just tired. Now take a moment and imagine you are standing at that Clinique counter. Because if you look to your left or to your right or behind you, you would probably see Estee Lauder. And if you did not see the Estee Lauder counter, you could probably smell it. And all the old ladies that surrounded it. I don't know what it is about Estee Lauder in department stores, but those counters are always full of the rich old white ladies who bathed in perfume. You can be standing outside the store and you can still smell the perfume. It's so strong. And it's never the Estee Lauder displays in Sephora. Whenever I've been in a Sephora store, I've never seen people crowded around the Estee Lauder display, certainly not older people. Anytime there would be people there, it would be really young people trying to find their match in double wear. Yes, the double wear foundation, the foundation you're not allowed to dislike. So many people recommend the double wear foundation, but it does not look good on everybody. I fell for it because I saw it look good on a couple of people, but it's like a cult of cake faces. It's just not a universally flattering foundation formula. Let me just say that. It's not gonna work for every skin type. And as soon as you mention you don't like it, you get people like attacking. How dare you not like Estee Lauder double wear? It's because it makes me look like I'm wearing a mask. And it makes a lot of people look like they're wearing a mask because not everybody has a skin type appropriate for that foundation. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here because I just dislike that foundation something fierce. I want to like Estee Lauder because I feel like it's this prestigious brand. Like so many people talk positively about Estee Lauder but everything about it just bores me. It's just beige. When I think of Estee Lauder, I think beige but like a scary kind of beige Estee Lauder, like the Estee Lauder companies, own everything. Kind of like the Queen of England. <laughs> I just kind of have this image of the Estee Lauder brand just watching over all of the little companies that they own. I wonder if Estee Lauder, the Estee Lauder, was ever in the same room as the Queen of England. Now I have to find that out. Okay. Anyway, moving on, and speaking of the queen, Lancome. Or Lancome? I've heard it pronounced so many different ways. Everybody 
says it a little bit differently and that I get confused because I'm so used to seeing it written and not used to hearing it said out loud. So if I did not get the pronunciation correct, feel free to correct me at any time. Just putting that out there. Anyway, the only thing that I can ever remember about Lancome is that Lisa Eldridge is the global creative director. And I don't mean that as the insult that it sounds like. I, I love, I love Lisa Eldridge. She is the queen. Uh, she's just one of the best makeup artists that I've ever encountered. But Lancome is just, it's just there. It's classy in that Dior, Chanel, YSL, everything is going to be scented with floral perfume kind of way. I just don't get excited when I see Lancome products. I just don't feel that passion and excitement like I do with some of the other makeup brands and products I have. I see Lancome ads, I see Lancome products and I'm just like, okay, it seems so practical. It seems like it's the kind of makeup that appeals largely to middle-aged women working corporate jobs who are trying to move up the ladder, you know, so they're going to put on their pinky fuchsia lipstick before their meeting and tackle the day, but makeup is functional and practical and almost a necessity as opposed to something that is an expression and fun. I just strongly get that impression from it, which is why I always look past it. And the next brand is so boring, I didn't even think about it the first time I was going through a list. I was trying to come up with my list. I was like the top thing brands that I always skip over, the ones that bore me. I didn't even think about this one until I started thinking about some of the other brands I already mentioned. Bobbi Brown. Like I can actually picture the Sephora store layout in my head and I know that sounds crazy, but I love going to Sephora stores because I love being surrounded by fellow makeup junkies. Even if I'm not buying anything, I just like being around my fellow people. It just, it feels good to be in a place where I'm around makeup lovers. I could just spend all day in like a Mac store because I'm with people who get it anyway. So I can picture the Sephora layout in my head and as I'm going through the store in my mind, I can't even think of where Bobbi Brown is because I never look at Bobbi Brown products, never. Bobbi Brown products are priced just high enough that it's not something I really want to take a gamble on and I don't feel like the name recognition is there to have it be priced as high as some of the other brands because there are some name recognition things with other brands, Dior, YSL, those luxury brands that are priced pretty close to Bobbi Brown, if not the same. And there's just a little bit of added value there because you're paying for that luxury name. And I don't feel like Bobbi Brown has that same appeal. Like if I was to tell my father I was wearing Dior, he'd be impressed. And if I told him Bobbi Brown, he'd be like, okay. And we wouldn't know that it was supposed to be worth more money, basically. The average person wouldn't know why or understand why those products were priced the way that they were. And I have to say that Bobbi Brown simply isn't my flask of whiskey. I had to use that phrase. I've been looking for an opportunity to use it because I was gonna say she wasn't my cup of tea because actually in comparison, I would say that Bobbi Brown definitely is a cup of tea, but the kind that you brew and then walk away from and forget about. It's just that the Bobbi Brown makeup philosophy is all about natural. And my makeup philosophy is anything goes. So it makes sense that I wouldn't really think twice of that brand. Now, I do wanna mention one drugstore brand because there's not a whole lot of drugstore brands that really bore me right now because I'm kind of foreign to the drugstore. I definitely was living in my little snobby world for a while, buying a lot of luxury or at least mid to high end products. And I've kind of been trying to explore drugstore stuff more. Anyway, there's a brand called Annabelle, which most of you probably haven't heard of because it's Canadian. And that's why I really wanna support it. I really wanna buy Annabelle products because they're Canadian. I would love to have more Canadian accessible good products out there, but every time I look at an Annabelle display at the drugstore, I think, mm, no, I think I'll pass. I just can't get motivated to pick the products up. It's not that things are priced high. I find that the prices tend to be pretty similar to something like CoverGirl or Maybelline, and so it's very reasonable. It just doesn't look exciting to me. I'm sure there are hidden gems in there somewhere, but how much digging would I have to do? I just don't hear this brand talked about. The displays don't interest me. The products don't excite me. 
you know, there's not a lot of color there. It's not like the, the NYX display. When I walk by that and I'm thinking art, I'm thinking what can I create? I don't really think anything. I don't really have any kind of opinion about Annabelle. Anyway, moving back to higher end products here, I am going to get murdered for saying this, but Marc Jacobs. Yes, Marc Jacobs, because the aesthetic is so minimalistic and so cohesive and put together, and I'm a hot mess. I can't relate to that structure. I love a few of the Marc Jacobs products I have, but I only have them because A, I was given them, or B, I tried a sample first. I've never seen a Marc Jacobs product in the wild and thought, I need this, I have to have this. It all looks so nice, and I wish I was the kind of person who could have a beautiful Marc Jacobs collection looking all polished and clean. I'm just so far from that type. I feel like the Marc Jacobs girl or Marc Jacobs woman is kind of like my sister. You know, she's always polished and accessorized and put together. And that's what I get from the Marc Jacobs brand. I just imagine the Marc Jacobs woman buying designer clothing, getting things tailored. I can imagine her partying like a rock star on like a Friday night, but somehow always looking fabulous and then still waking up Saturday to go for brunch and just being so put together. And I'm just the opposite of all of those things. I just feel like Marc Jacobs is a little too perfect for me to really get into. Another easy breezy brand, and no, I am not talking CoverGirl, Josie Marin. I used to love her Maybelline ads back in the day. I remember ripping them out of magazines. I wanted to be her. I bought so many of those Maybelline products because I wanted to look like Josie Marin. And when I found out about her brand, I wanted all the things. And her skincare products are amazing when I remember to use them, when I remember to buy them. I never think about the brand. It's always that thing that I go, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, I should go repurchase this or purchase this thing that I tried. I just never think of it in the moment. I don't think of the makeup products as being memorable. Like the one thing I can remember is a blue tube of mascara. I remember liking that, but that's all I can remember when I think of the brand. I can't picture anything. Like I know it's there, I know it exists, and I know there's a fair amount of products in the line, but I just can't think of what they are because it's just not memorable to me as much as I wish that it was. The eighth brand I find boring is Buxom. Buxom tries so hard, plumping lip gloss and animal print. I can't decide if Buxom is like the desperate younger sister of Bare Minerals trying to get attention and like flirting with her boyfriend, or if she's the recently divorced aunt who is reliving her party days. Can't decide. I know people are obsessed with the Buxom lip glosses, but it's old news to me. The Buxom lip glosses have been around for so long. And if you've tried them, you either love them or you hate them. And I'm a person who happens to, to hate them because they're too sticky for me. I tried them so many times, I wanted to like them. And I've been getting more into gloss again, and I just can't do the buxom thing because my lips just stick together, hair sticks to my lips. It's just not a comfortable experience at all. And the slightly sexualized imagery that goes along with some of the products, I just, it's not even so far like Too Faced can go or like NARS. It's just like they're trying to be sexy, but it's not working. I think that they made a good effort when they came out with their single shadows, but they had to make it so hard for people because they have their own little compacts. The shadows are a weird shape. They fit into their compacts. You know, why couldn't they have done something like nice little round eyeshadow pans or even little square pans, things that would fit into your own palettes easy instead of having to purchase their own separate things. Because I have one of those custom Buxom palettes and I never, ever open it. I never use the shadows inside because it just looks like another generic nondescript eyeshadow palette. I forget that I have a couple good things in there, but I just don't see it and I don't think about it. Long story short, I feel like if Buxom changed the shape of their eyeshadow pans, more people would use them, you'd see more people talking about them, and they'd be more exciting. And the last brand that bores me is Smashbox. Smashbox products are good, but overall they're so safe. Smashbox is the safety school equivalent. 
you know, you can always fall back on them. You can rely on them. They're going to be there, but you're looking elsewhere first. I've used some Smashbox products before and I've been okay with them. And if I was given them, I'd use them, but I just don't feel the need to throw my money at Smashbox. I just, I'm not excited by it. I try because some of the products look interesting, but they always end up making me think of something else. Like I'll see a colorful mini Smashbox palette and instead of thinking, ooh, I need that, I'm thinking, ooh, I'll take out my Kat Von D. Overall, I just find Smashbox to be pretty lackluster right now. Anyway, that is everything for the nine beauty brands that bore me. <laughs> Again, I was largely talking from my point of view and my impressions. And if you disagree with me, Feel free to explain why in the comments. I would love to hear some different points of view. And let me know what brands bore you. What brands just don't excite you when you see they've released a new product you just think, and next? I am curious because I know we all have different tastes and we all love different products. So I, I, I'd love to uh, chat with you guys a little bit. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you did and I hope we get a chance to chat soon. Bye for now.